Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good. That's excellent. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Suze Montgomery, and I'm with Ventura Adult Education, Continuing Education, otherwise known as VASE. We are uh, a vocational educational school, but we have other community programs that we have. Uh, our principal is here today. I know we have Dr. Babb in the audience. I'm going to introduce everyone in a moment here. But first, I want to introduce uh, a little, uh, give you a little history on the Knowledge Bowl. This is our sixth, I believe, sixth, seventh. seventh. Oh, time goes fast. This is our seventh Knowledge Bowl. It was created, I created it to empower my students. My students are seniors. I'm proud of my students. I'm proud of my team. I'm really excited to have them here, and all my students that I've had over the years, a lot of you are in the audience that I'm really happy to see, and I've got new current students in the audience as well here at Aegis Living. I think we should start by having a flag salute. Do we have a flag? Okay, we can pretend we have a flag. Do we have a flag? Oh, cool. If you are able, please stand to salute the flag out of respect. If you're not standing, please put your hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I believe allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'd like to start by thanking our hosts. We have a May, this is our first time we've been at Aegis. We were at the Ventura Townhouse for years and I think it was time for a change. I must say this room is a lot nicer, so I'm really, it's really a beautiful room and we're really excited to be here and we'd like to thank Bill Phelps and Michael uh, over here. And Michael is also, we know Michael from next door where he used to be, but now he's over here and I think he's happy. But I'm really happy to introduce both of them and thank them for their hospitality along with their great staff. And talking about that, uh, I was talking to uh, Pat Davison, who's in the back of the room in the orange shirt, from CAPS TV. He also gave them the ultimate compliment by saying that he, uh, they have the best staff here they've ever worked with. So thanks to you and your wonderful staff today. <laughs> also, we have some dignitaries in the room. And I believe I saw Dr. Michael Babb, who's my boss, my superintendent of Ventura Unified School District. Dr. Babb, over here. <laughs> and next to Dr. Babb is my principal and director, Carolyn Vang Walker, who keeps us all on an even keel with love and appreciation. Carolyn? <laughs> In front of Carolyn is Mr. John Walker, a member of our school board who's been there how many years? 27 years. Thank you for being here as well. Uh, I think, let's see, do we have any representation from Ventura City Council? I have not seen anybody, but when she does arrive, it will be ex-mayor, but still city council person, Cheryl Heitman. She will be here today representing the city of Ventura and the Ventura City Council. Uh, let's see, I'd also like to thank my family, my husband, John Hankins, who is recording this today as a reporter in the front row. He'll be writing an article on this for the newspapers. So with that, I think we are going to turn this over. I will be in the back here keeping score. We have Beth in the, next to my husband, John, who will be keeping uh, the time. I will be the scorekeeper and the coach behind my team. And my team here, we have Clint Jacobs, Don Haskell, Terry McCoy and Mary Ayers returning back for our team. Well, I'm going to give it over to you, and you can introduce your team and maybe the rules for the day. This is, oh, I'm sorry, this is Bobby Powers, the principal of Buena High School. And Frank, where are you? Frank Davis is in the far, far back down there holding a court in the back room. And also thank, once again, CAPS TV. This will be re later uh, broadcast. And we'll have uh, copies for our teams, uh, everyone on the team. And we'll be able to show this for a long time. So this will be historically, yes? I have one little commercial. One commercial. Oh, OK. <laughs> Charge and fun to be had by all. 
So it's from 1 to 3 on the 4th of July. Please come, tray, tip, all sorts of fun. Please come on. Good. Okay, anything free, we're in. And also, I've noticed quite a few of my friends that came out to support us today, too, that haven't been here before in the back. Thanks for being here, guys. And let the games begin. So I'd also like to thank Joel Levin, our school uh, librarian, who is actually the leader of the team. So, and we have on our team Anna, Samantha, Ollie, and Brady. So there we go. So the rules of the game are we will go back and forth with questions. So I'll ask a question, you'll get it right and get some points or not. And then if you don't, the question will move over to this team and then they will get it right or not. And then it'll, the questions will continue to go back and forth. You'll have 30 seconds to answer your question. And um, I assume the timekeeper will let us know when that 30 seconds is up. Excellent, good. And today we will be hearing questions from four categories, literature, history and geography, current events, and potpourri. Are we ready to begin? Good luck to both teams. We will start with this team. The first question, the book In the Heart of the Sea tells the true story of the whaling ship Exus, a tragic tale that inspired what novelist to write Moby Dick? Herman Melville. That's correct. Is this off? Is this off? You, you heard me? Thank you. Okay. The team captain, Mary, will give the answers, yes. And then um, Anna on this side will be the team captain who will give the answers, so. All right, sticking with literature, are you ready? F. Scott Fitzgerald's 1925 masterpiece, The Great Gatsby, was loosely inspired by his relationship with his wife. What is the name of Fitzgerald's wife? Zelda Fitzgerald? Correct. <laughs> it was Zelda Fitzgerald. Oh, sorry, I'll be louder next time. You know what? They're just gonna, you're going to have to really okay. speak into them. Okay. All right, here we go. We're staying with literature. HBO's hit television show, Game of Thrones, is based on a series of books by what fantasy author? Tolkien. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. So the same question will go to Buena side. Would you like me to repeat the question? Oh, no. no? George R. R. Martin. Correct. It's her favorite TV show. <laughs> Let's give history a try. Are you ready? Tom Brokaw coined a term for the generation of Americans who grew up in the Great Depression and fought in World War II. What did he call this generation? The greatest generation. Correct. <laughs> In 1984, what presidential candidate wound up defeating Walter Mondale with an 18.21% margin of victory, making it one of the largest landslides in election history? Reagan? Correct, Ronald Reagan. All right, here we go. 
What 2005 natural disaster was one of the five deadliest in the United States history, striking the Gulf Coast and causing over a hundred billion in damage? Hurricane Katrina. Correct. <laughs> All right. What is the name of the strait that connects the Pacific and Arctic Oceans between Russia and the United States? Uh, the Bering Strait? Correct. Did okay. I say, what did I say? Oh, straight. Straight. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe I need it's to move the like book a, a little street. closer. <laughs> it's like a little mouth up here. <laughs> no whispering. <laughs> but you're welcome to correct my mistakes. <laughs> All right, let's go to current events. You ready? In tomorrow's California state election, who are the two main candidates vying for the Democratic presidential nomination? <laughs> Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. Correct. Yeah. Ready? What professional boxing champion, born Cassius Clay in 1942, passed away on June 3rd after a career known for his religious conversion, political stances, and bravado? Okay. Muhammad Ali. Yes. Correct. <laughs> Where will this year's Summer Olympics be held? Rio de Janeiro. Correct. <laughs> Which presidential candidate claims that, if elected, he will build a wall between the United States and Mexico to prevent undocumented workers from entering the United States and that he will make Mexico pay for the project. Donald Trump. Correct. <laughs> All right, let's go for potpourri. Ready? What is the term for the second in command in a kitchen? the person ranking next after the head chef. Sous chef. Correct. Oh, yep. oh, yeah. I should know that. I should know that. I watch cooking shows. What children's television show, which premiered in 1969, recently made a deal to show new episodes on HBO? Sixty nine. Oh, what's the television to the evening? Oh, Sesame Street. What? Sesame Street. Sesame Street. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> In Egyptian mythology, who was the god of the underworld? and the afterlife. Yeah, could be. Amun Ra? No, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Over to the Buena team. Do you need me to repeat the question? Okay. Um, Sure. Okay. <laughs> Please repeat it. <laughs> In Egyptian mythology, who was the god of the underworld and the afterlife? Osiris? Correct. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, we're going back to literature. What British writer added more than 1,700 words to the English language, including birthplace, champion, and majestic? Majestic. 
Chaucer? I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Does this side know? Shakespeare? It is Shakespeare. Yeah, okay. yeah. had it. David, it gone with your gut. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are you ready? Theodore Giesel, the author of over 60 children's books, is better known by what name? Dr. Seuss. Correct. <laughs> Writer Margaret Wise Brown and illustrator Clement Hurd have sold more than four million copies of this children's bedtime book, which, ments which mentions a great green room, bears sitting in chairs, and a cow jumping over the moon. Good night, moon. Correct. You didn't read children's okay. books. I like, I like that. <laughs> Okay, we'll move to history and geography. geography. What two Canadian provinces border Alaska? I don't know that. Um, oh, gosh. British Yukon Territory in Saskatchewan? Incorrect. Do you have the two? He says one of them's Yukon. Isn't it? 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 Correct or incorrect, but you have half. Both of you well, had, had half. half. You should. <laughs> okay. You should have followed your gut there. It was British Columbia and the oh, Yukon Territory. Sorry, yeah. Oh, yeah. Darn. Okay, we said that. Okay. Are you ready here? Franklin Delano Roosevelt famously declared that December seventh, nineteen forty-one would be a date which lived in infamy after what event? The bombing of Pearl Harbor. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> All right, are you ready? What hiking trail in the eastern United States extends between Springer Mountain in Georgia and Mount Katahdin in Maine, and is sometimes abbreviated as the A-T. Appalachian Trail. Correct. Okay, we're moving over to current events. What NBA player, basketball player, nicknamed the Black Mamba, played his final game on April 13th, retiring as the third leading scorer in NBA history. Kobe Bryant. Correct. I don't watch that. Oh, I couldn't that. remember. An outbreak of what disease led the CDC to issue a travel guidance warning, especially for pregnant women, in January 2016 for travelers to Colombia the Dominican Republic, Ecuador, El Salvador, and Jamaica. Uh, norovirus? Incorrect. The question goes over to this team. Do you have the answer? Zika virus. Zika virus. Yeah. Very good. I don't know what that is. I don't travel and I'm not pregnant. All right, over to you. Last week it was revealed that an iron dagger buried with King Tutankhamun or King Tut was most likely made from what unusual source? Oh, yeah, it was from Reno. Oh, it was from, it was from Reno. Um, 
A meteor, a meteorite? Yes, yeah, correct. Good one. Good one, Brady. <laughs> okay, over to Potpourri. What puppeteer is best known for his work voicing a variety of characters, including Yoda, Fozzie the Bear, Miss Piggy, Cookie Monster, and Grover? Jim Hansen? That's incorrect. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Do you know? Michael Jackson. No. I was going to say Frank Walker, but I had no idea. Who? I was going to say Frank Walker. Just say Michael Jackson. Frank Walker, but I had no idea. All right, we'll say Mike. Yeah, I can just say Frank Walker. Walker? Yeah. Frank Walker. Frank Walker. Frank Walker? You got half the name right. It's Frank, but it's Frank Oz. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. We were going to say Michael Jackson because we didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been incorrect. <laughs> All right. What is the exact number of miles in a marathon? 26.5. Incorrect. Sorry. 26.2. Yes, correct. 26.2. Right Are you ready? What cartoonist who created the Peanuts comic strip has a museum dedicated to his life and works in Santa Rosa, California? Charles Schultz. That's correct. It's Charles. You ready? What is the mascot of the University of Kansas? Is that your answer? No. Buffalo, say buffalo. A buffalo. <laughs> That's incorrect. Over here. Do you have the answer? How about Jayhawk? That's right. <laughs> okay, we're going back to literature. Okay, so that was them. Okay, so over here. Which American author who has written 10 books won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction in 2007 for his post-apocalyptic -apoc novel, The Road. Ray Bradbury? That's incorrect. <laughs> Do you, do you want me to read the question again? Yes, please. Okay. Which American author who has written 10 books won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction in 2007 for his post-apocalyptic novel, The Road. Ken Burns? Incorrect. It's Cormac McCarthy. Oh. Okay, Gwena, are you ready? <laughs> what witty author's autobiography was finally published in 2010 after he stipulated that it could only be released 100 years after his death in 1910? Over to this side. Would you like me to read it again? Yes, please. Okay. What witty author's autobiography was finally published in 
2010, after he stipulated that it could only be released 100 years after his death in 1910. Oscar Wilde. That's incorrect. You need to follow your gut. It was Mark Twain. Oh, he died. Oh, okay. I always thought he was so much older than I'm hearing all kinds of correct answers out of her mouth. <laughs> all right, are you ready? Frank McCourt won a Pulitzer Prize for a book that the New York Times called an achingly sweet memoir of his childhood in the slums of Limerick, Ireland. What is the title of this novel by McCourt? I read it freshman year, and I don't know what it is. Yeah. Um, Anne's ashes. That's incorrect. Over to here. Can I repeat it? They said Anne's ashes. So, would you like me to read this story, uh, the question again? Yes, please. Okay. So, Frank McCourt won a Pulitzer Prize for a book that the New York Times called an achingly sweet memoir of his childhood in the slums of Limerick, Ireland. What is the title of this novel by McCourt? Annie's Ashes. You guys are really close. It's Angela's Ashes. Angela's Ashes. I knew it was one of those. OK. Starts with A. OK, we're back to history and geography. What state is the home of Bryce Canyon National Park, Capitol Reef National Park, and Zion National Park? Utah? Correct. Ready? Alexis Tsipras is the prime minister of this country, the capital of which is Athens, and which, is, which also contains the famous locations Santorini and Mykonos. Greece. Correct. <laughs> yeah. What French holiday is celebrated every year on July 14th, commemorating the storming of a French fortress prison at the beginning of the French Revolution? Bastille Day. Correct. The Ring of Kerry, the Burren, and Blarney Castle are all points of interest for what European island? Ireland. Yes. <laughs> okay, back to current events. Hackers recently hacked into the social media accounts of Facebook's CEO and founder. What is the name of this famous Facebook founder whose life is chronicled in the movie The Social Network? Mark Zuckerberg. Correct. I didn't know Last year, the Ice Bucket Challenge raised $115 million for research for which disease? Can we ask you to read it again? Sure. Last year, the Ice Bucket Challenge, challenge raised $115 million for research for what disease? Answer. That's incorrect. ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease? That's correct. Okay, we're on to potpourri. 
What breed of dog won best in show at the 2016 Westminster Dog Show? Poodle. That's incorrect. Who's <laughs> laughing? See, I said that too. Bulldog. Um, Corgi. That's incorrect. It's a German short-haired pointer. <laughs> Are you ready? What chess prodigy became the youngest player to win the United States Chess Championship at the age of 14 and was the first American-born player to win the World Chess Championship? Bobby Fischer. That's correct. <laughs> In Greek mythology, what Athenian king killed the Minotaur and successfully escaped from the labyrinth on Crete? Theseus. Correct. Ready? What Memphis-based record label released the first recordings from Elvis Presley, Johnny Cash, and Carl Perkins? Sun Records. Correct. Okay, back to literature. Which English American poet wrote the poem, The Wasteland? Robert Frost. <laughs> That's incorrect. Over to you. Would you like me to read it again? Yes, please. Which English American poet wrote the poem The Wasteland? D.S. Eliot. That's correct. <laughs> Robert Frost spoke at the inauguration of which U.S. president? Clinton? Incorrect. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> Robert Frost spoke at the inauguration of which U.S. president? John F. Kennedy. Correct. Oh. He's way older than that. Okay. <laughs> Ready? Which beat generation author reached the pinnacle of his career after publishing On the Road in 1957? Um, Jack Kerouac? Correct. Our last question in literature. 11-22-63 is a book written by Stephen King about what important event in United States history? The assassination of John F. Kevin. Correct. Okay, we have a couple history questions left. Nairobi is the capital of what East African country?
the capital name again? Nairobi. Nairobi. Somalia. Uganda? Incorrect. Uh. Nairobi is the capital of what East African country? Kenya. That's correct. Wait, what? Wait, what was it? Kenya. Kenya. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ready? 72 years ago today, on June 6, 1944, American troops made the largest amphibious invasion in history by storming the beaches of what place in France? Normandy. Correct. Okay, we have a couple questions left in current events. A gorilla at the Cincinnati Zoo was shot and killed last week after a boy fell into the animal's enclosure. What was the name of this gorilla that was fatally shot? Dead meat. <laughs> Wait, what did she say? Dead meat. <laughs> okay. Is that or I don't know? Well, I'd give you a point for funny, so that's good. Okay, so a gorilla at the Cincinnati Zoo was shot and killed last week after a boy fell into the animal's enclosure. What was the name of this gorilla that was fatally shot? Namabi? No, it was very close. It's Harambe. Oh. All right. The International Consortium of Investigated Journalists recently coordinated the release of information about how rich United States clients hid millions of dollars in offshore accounts. What was the name given to these leaked documents? Okay. The International Consortium of Investigative Journalists recently coordinated the release of information about how rich United States clients hid millions of dollars in offshore accounts. What was the name given to these leaked documents? The rich people papers. <laughs> it's the Panama papers. Oh, okay. Okay, we have two questions left in potpourri. Get your thinking brains on here. It's a math question. Oh, no. 182 divided by 2 plus 44 minus one plus three equals okay 182 divided by two plus 44 minus one plus three equals One hundred thirty-five. That's incorrect. Over to you. One eighty-two divided by two, plus forty-four minus one plus three equals one hundred thirty-seven. Correct. (laughs) 
The Tonight Show has been airing on late night television since 1954, featuring hosts like Johnny Carson, Steve Allen, and Jay Leno. Who has been the host of The Tonight Show since 2014? Jimmy Fallon. That's correct. So we have one final question. If we need it, do we need it? We're tied, so we have this is it, people. So how do we? Okay, this we're going to bet. They can bet as much as they want to on the final question. Okay. What? So everybody got five, ten, fifty, five, ten, fifty, twenty. They each have twenty-one apiece. You have twenty-one. Okay. So are we going to have them write it down? Yeah. Is there a category? Yes, it's it's potpourri. Oh. So <laughs> that's not a category. <laughs> so I guess we'll have them write down their bets and then write down their answers and then that's how we'll do it. Okay. So. Okay, you bet before the question, so put your, put we your have, bet down. We need paper. Down. We need paper. We need paper. We need paper. We need paper. So write your bet. So you have 21 points. Okay. So you'll be writing your answer down. Good luck to both teams. Okay. Name all four members of the musical group, The Beatles, first and last names. Time is up. All right. Buena team bet 21 points. Huh? And they named Ringo Starr, Paul McCartney, John Lennon, and George Harrison. That's correct. You doubled your points. We bet 21. They bet 21 as well. I have a feeling. <laughs> Ringo Starr, Paul McCartney, George Harrison, and John Lennon. Yeah. <laughs> Do we both win? <laughs> Can this game end in a tie? Yeah. Yes. Very good. Yeah.